is a quick video to show how to compute measures of center in Excel. I have a, sh a short made up data set here of bunny lengths and inches. Um, Excel is certainly much more powerful a tool and it's really good for dealing with large data sets, but for this video I'm just going to use a small group of numbers as an illustration. I'm also not going to be explaining the measures of center in this video. So if you are new to the measures mean, median, and mode, and mid-range, um, take a look at maybe your textbook or another video. I'm just going to show you how to compute those in Excel. Okay, first measure of center, the mean. This is probably the most common one. And in Excel, the mean is calculated with the function called average. So I would type an equal sign and then average. And then all you have to do is either type in the numbers, each separated by a comma, or in this case, I already have my numbers in the, in the list, so I just highlight those boxes, close my parentheses, and there's my mean. For the median, this is the easiest one. The function in Excel for median is median. So equals median, and then same thing, highlight your data, and press Enter. Um, notice that to compute the median in Excel, you do not need to sort the data as you would if you were doing that by hand. Um, Excel will take care of that. The mode in Excel is a little bit complicated because um, data sets can have more than one mode. Now, this particular set of data actually doesn't have any modes, so if I try and use the mode function, it tells me does not exist, right? Not a number. Um, if we throw in a duplicate value, say 9, if your data set has a single mode like this one does, so I have two 9s, but all the rest of the values uh, only show up once, then you can use the single version of the mode function. So this can be done either with equals mode um, as its own, this is actually an outdated function, so it's recommended not to use this. Um, the original mode function is the same as this mode.sngl, which gives you a single mode value. So I would do mode.single or sngl, highlight my data, and in this case it should tell me 9. There it is. But often, um, especially if you have a data set with lots of values in it, you might have multiple modes. So maybe I have two nines, but also two sixes. Now I have a data set that has two modes. And Excel needs to do this a little bit differently because it can't put two numbers in one box. Um, and that requires uh, something called an array formula. So in order to get multiple modes from your data set, what you want to do is highlight um, some number of boxes. So if you're not sure how many modes you want, you might need to highlight more than you need. In this case, I should only get two, but I'm going to go ahead and highlight six boxes just so you can see what happens. So I highlighted all the boxes. While they're highlighted, I'm going to start typing the formula equals mode.mult. So that would be the multiple mode option open my parentheses and highlight the data values. Close the parentheses and then before pressing enter, so you have to be careful if you've already pressed enter, start again. Um, before pressing enter, you're actually going to do um, hold down the buttons, control, shift, and enter. So control, shift, enter is how you enter that um, array formula. And you'll see that it tells me, okay, six is a mode, nine is a mode, and then that's it. So if you see these NA values, that means, okay, you've got all of your modes. You may not use this, or you may not need this method for a lot of cases, but again, especially in a large data set, you might expect to see multiple modes. The final measure of center I'll talk about here is the mid-range. Um, and Excel does not have a particular function for mid-range that I'm aware of, um, but we can easily compute this because the mid-range is just the number in between the max and the min value. So I can use the max and min functions of Excel um, and just average them or add them together and divide by two. So in a formula, this would look like equals, I'm gonna make a parentheses, find my max value with the max function, max, and then highlight my data. And then closing the parentheses for that max function, I'm going to add the min with my min function. So min, highlighting my data again, 
close the parentheses for the min function, and then close the parentheses that go around that max plus min. And then on the outside, I'm going to divide that by 2. So I'm essentially getting the number right in between the max and min values. In this case, that is 7.9. That's it for measures of center. Thanks for watching.